This video is about the conceptual design of a cryogenic rocket turbo pump with CF Turbo. First, you create a new project choosing the pump design module. Insert the design point of the pump. The design point, or duty point, is defined by volume flow rate, total pressure, and rotational speed. In this case, the fluid is liquid oxygen. In CF Turbo, gases, liquids, or mixtures can be specified using the CoolProp database. We have to specify the inlet conditions, and there are several options to define a pre-swirl if applicable. On the right side, you'll see the specific speed and the general machine type, and some physical key values. Now we add new components by starting CF Turbo's stage designer. In this example, we will design a dual stage pump made of an axial inducer and a radial main impeller. Here we must select the energy distribution between the inducer and the impeller. Usually, the inducer brings 8% to 12% of the total energy rise. We are ready to start the detailed design of the inducer running sequentially through all different design steps. CF Turbo is driven by fundamental physical equations and numerous empirical correlations. These approximation functions are taken from textbooks, research papers, and our own data. So our code will be able to provide reasonable and detailed 3D models of all turbo machinery components. After calculating and adjusting the impeller main dimensions, we modify the axial length of the impeller, defining the position of leading and trailing edges. Now we shape the leading edge and the meridional contour of the impeller. The geometrical description of the hub will be transformed into an S-shaped curve, which is typical for many inducers. Finally, we add a simplified thickness of the hub solid in order to create a true geometrical solid later for export reasons. All Bezier points can be modified numerically by changing numbers in the pop-up window. Next, we are designing the blade properties. In this window, we define the number of blades as well as the blade shape, the blade thickness on leading and on training edges. On the right side of the window, we have a graphical representation of the velocity triangles. There are several models implemented for a slip factor correlation. For pumps, the most common is the ghoulish model for inducer. Using these parameters, blade angles on leading and trailing edges will be computed on every span. Then a method must be selected to calculate the radial equilibrium from hub to a shroud. The meridional and circumferential velocity components can be adjusted to balance pressure and centrifugal forces. In many cases, it is useful to choose the variable load option that enables you to shift the blade loading from hub to shroud. In the next design step, we do the mean line design, which determines the curvature of the blade between leading and trailing edges on every span. The wrap angle of the blade can be adjusted graphically or numerically. On the right side of the window, we have several diagrams to evaluate geometrical and physical properties like relative velocity, blade loading, or static pressure. In CF Turbo, the user can choose between various methods of blade design. Currently, we offer conformal mapping, direct modification of the beta distribution, as well as the so-called inverse design method that's based on blade loading distribution. In the final two design steps for the impeller, we make the blade profiling, blade thickness distribution, and we should round up the leading and the trailing edges. Switching to our 3D model view, we can see the hub and blades of the inducer as three-dimensional CAD geometry. At this point, we are ready to create the second component, which is our main pump impeller. As specified before, the radial impeller will provide 88% of the total hydraulic energy. In this example, 
185.4 bar total pressure rise. In the parameter section, we again use empirical correlations to calculate the dimensions of the impeller. For this example, we show the work coefficient, which defines the impeller diameter, and the hydraulic efficiency functions. All impeller dimensions can be adjusted manually if required. This will influence the geometry of the model for subsequent design steps. On the right side of the window, you see important physical values, a meridional section, and the Cordier diagram. In the meridional view, at first, we adjust the relative axial position of the main impeller and bring it close to the inducer. Then we modify shape and position of the leading edge, as well as the general shape of hub and shroud contours and the axial length of the impeller. As shown here, adjustments of the curves can be made intuitively by drag and drop of bezier points. Alternatively, each bezier point can be placed numerically, which is essential for batch mode runs. Tangential transitions between curves can be set automatically or manually by defining an angle. On the right side of the window, there are diagrams for area progression and curvature, which can assist you in shaping the meridional contour of the impeller. A plot gives an indication about the meridional velocity magnitude within the impeller. The meridional velocity is calculated by a potential flow method. To finish the meridional contour of the impeller, we add hub and shroud solids. For example, we can split the curves or transform them into Bezier splines. For demonstration purposes, we are choosing a simple model of the hub and shroud contour. This tool is very flexible for modeling detailed hub and shroud geometry. All Bezier points can be modified numerically by changing numbers in the pop-up window. The description of hub and shroud contours will be part of the secondary flow path design, which will be done later. Hub and shroud solids, as well as blades, can be exported later into any CAD format or meshing tool for FEA analysis. Now we have to calculate the velocity triangle in the blade properties design window. In this window, we define the number of blades as well as the blade shape, the blade thickness on leading and trailing edges. We chose eight blades and the blade shape will remain on Freeform 3D as recommended for such type of impellers. There are several models implemented for a slip factor correlation. For pumps, the most common is the ghoulish Wiesner model or the Fleiderer correlation that will be used here. Using these parameters, blade angles on leading and trailing edges will be computed on every span like it was done for the inducer. On the right side of the window, we have a graphical and numerical representation of the velocity triangles and the slip factor correlation diagram, among others. In the next design step, we do the mean line design, which determines the curvature of the blade between leading and trailing edges on every span. The wrap angle of the blade can be adjusted graphically or numerically. On the right side of the window, we have several diagrams to evaluate geometrical and physical properties. You can see plots and diagrams for relative and absolute velocity, pressure, swirl, and blade loading, among others. These calculations are based on Stanitz Prien methodology. The user can choose between several different design modes for meanline design, like conformal mapping or blade loading definition. To finalize the geometry of the main impeller, in this case we just accept the internal design proposals in the blade profile section, which uses a constant thickness for the blades. Leading edges are given an elliptic shape and the trailing edges will be left blunt and trimmed on the outer impeller diameter. Now we can see both components, the inducer and the main radial impeller in our 3D viewer. On the left side of the window, there is a model tree showing components and subcomponents which allow easy navigation, renaming, as well as adjusting color and translucency. A so-called model finishing enables the user to create and to export high-quality CAD solid models for export. During the model finishing process, a user has the possibility to specify fillets on hub and shroud if applicable.
Compared to other conceptual turbo machinery design tools, CF Turbo allows a very detailed geometry representation of all significant components. This is an advantage for direct export to CFD or FEA codes without applying another 3D CAD system to prepare the computational domain. Before we go ahead, we initially save the file. At this point, we are ready to create the next component, which will be an unveined diffuser downstream of the impeller. There are several different possibilities to define the general shape of the diffuser. Here we choose the radial diffuser option to create an initial geometry. Then we have the possibility to modify the length and width of the diffuser by changing the numbers. We can put in relative or absolute values. On the right side, we can see a meridional sketch of the diffuser, showing its position in a ZR diagram. In general, the stator module of CF Turbo can be used to design either unveined diffusers or veined and return channels of high complexity, including 2D or 3D shaped blades like bowl diffusers for mixed flow type machines. The next component we design will be the volute. For volute design, we can select different cross sections like round, radius based, freeform, etc., all symmetric and asymmetric. The cross section shape can vary in the circumferential direction as well. There are different velocity based design rules to calculate the extension of the spiral. For example, the user can select between Fleiderer or Stepanov equations. Additionally, the user can create a spiral shape by their own geometrical requirements using the so-called geometry-based design mode. A correction factor can consider the influence of the cutwater thickness to the spiral shape. Once the spiral contour is done, we make the discharge diffuser. We can specify the length and outlet diameter. There are different shapes available, and the discharge diffuser can be curved in axial direction too. Finally, we create a fillet radius which represents the cutwater of the volute. Besides the fillet cutwater option, the user could go for so-called simple or sharp cutwater design. Here the volute model is shown in the 3D viewer besides the inducer and main impeller. Since the 3D viewer of CF Turbo runs on a 3D CAD kernel, there are a large variety of display options and numerous functions to create, to show, and check the geometry models. This fundamental functionality is beneficial later when it comes to CAD export and batch mode runs. Again, we rename components and we change the transparency of the volute within the model tree on the left side of the screen. On the right side of the window, informational comments and warnings are shown, which support the user in their design work. The comments are linked to an integrated online help manual. To prepare a CFD model, the user should add a pipe on the suction side of the impeller. For this purpose, we add an axial stator. The non-rotating component should be given a certain length, and there must be a small gap between pipe and impeller in order to create the secondary flow path later. In this case, we have added a 100 millimeter pipe at the inlet and a two millimeter gap between pipe and impeller. Additionally, we have added a rounded hub nose contour in front of the inducer to ensure an undisturbed inflow to this component. Its length, shape, and tangential transition can be exactly defined. Later, when preparing the CFD solver setup, the hub nose should be given the boundary condition rotating wall. The hub nose could get an arbitrary axis symmetric shape. We immediately can see the extended model in 3D. To finish this component design, we rename the pipe on the inlet side as well. To get a watertight cab model, we are creating the secondary flow path which describes the space around the impeller. In the current CF Turbo version, the user has to add a tiny component between the two impellers to fulfill the internal requirements for secondary flow path design. Another precondition making the secondary flow path is the creation of the hub and shroud solids. 
The initial secondary flow path describes a, more or less, simplified space, which can be adjusted by drag and drop of Bezier points. In general, there's high flexibility in shaping the space between the impeller and the casing. The corner points can be adjusted graphically or numerically. As shown here, the casing contours of the secondary flow region are created and modified interactively. We split curves to place corner points. All straight lines can be transformed into Bezier splines if required. One of the advantages to create the secondary flow path directly in CF Turbo will be the ability to proceed with 3D CAD export and meshing without the incorporation of a third-party CAD system. This streamlines the whole CAE process of design exploration and simulation. The rotational surfaces of the secondary flow regions can be modeled very detailed. For example, here we modify the casing contour near the eye of the impeller. This is very often used to design a small gap to minimize volumetric losses. In general, the shroud contour of the impeller can be adjusted accordingly. The user could model a wear ring or a simplified labyrinth seal to prepare the CFD geometry already within CF Turbo. Now we see the fully closed flow domain in our 3D viewer. Our model is ready for geometry export and simulation. We change colors and repeat the model finishing for inducer and main radial impeller. CF Turbo has export formats to all major CFD codes and CAD systems, as well as neutral formats like STEP, STL, or Parasolid. We always recommend 3D CFD simulations to evaluate pump geometry models designed in CF Turbo. According to our experience, potential flow calculations through flow simulations or loss model-based performance curve estimations will not be sufficient for reliable feedback. For Turbo Machinery CFD simulation codes like ANSYS CFX, Fine Turbo, Star CCM Plus, Cimerix MP, or TCFD allow cost-effective, accurate predictions of performance, hydraulic efficiency, shaft power, torque, NPSH, and cavitation in general. Another possibility would be to export geometry components to create physical prototypes. Rapid prototyping methods allow to produce detailed and durable test models for many applications, but not for all kinds of rotating machinery operating conditions. As shown in this image, CF Turbo has interfaces to various CFD codes. All interfaces are under continuous improvement. The list will be extended if new codes enter the market. Furthermore, it is essential to create robust, automated workflows that allow user-friendly access for experts and beginners. For CF Turbo, there is a bi-directional integration into ANSYS Workbench available. In recent years, it has become more and more affordable to combine turbo machinery design software and CFD codes with optimization algorithms due to lower computational cost. Here we see an example for such a process combining CF Turbo, ANSYS OptiSling, and Cimerix MP. The Rocket Turbo Pump example has been exported to Cimerix MP to run a CFD simulation. Cimerix MP is a modern, robust, fast, accurate, and cost-effective general-purpose 3D Navier-Stokes code. CFD simulations with Cimerix MP provide realistic results that compare accurately with multiple field tests. Here we see a screenshot of a converged solution for the steady state simulation using Cimerix MP. Besides residuals, we're able to monitor physical properties and integral values like head rise, hydraulic efficiency, shaft power, and torque. This steady state simulation on a 3 million nodes mesh took about 30 minutes on a laptop with an Intel i7 processor. Transient simulations with four revolutions would take less than two hours to converge for the same model. To download a free trial today, go to cfturbo.com.